everybody. Hello and, and welcome, welcome to, to the live stream, stream everybody. everybody. How's, How's it going? going? Um, um, if you, you can, can hear me and, and see me, let me know if everything's, everything's going okay, okay on your end. Hi! I'm excited, I'm excited to do this little live for you guys. guys. Yay! Okay, okay the, the tech, tech to get, get all this working was, was so, so stressful, stressful, so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it all smooths over and we have a nice live stream. So, so I can, I can see, see your comments. comments, I have the computer here, here so, so I can, can see you guys. guys. And, and hey, Mary, Courtney, Courtney. hello, welcome, welcome to the live stream. stream. So, so while, while we, we wait, wait for, for everybody, everybody, let's see here. Hi. Hi, Hi you guys. guys. So, so while we wait, wait for, for everybody, everybody, I'm, I'm just, just going to kind of chill out for a second. second. Um, um, today, hello, hello everybody. everybody. Ooh, Ooh Scented Charisma, hi. Now, now I'm going to show you guys what we're making today, today. So, so I kind of have, have a couple, couple different, different camera views here. here. So let's go to this view. Um, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make these cute little what what carved pumpkins. Um, kind of cool. Like it's a really easy way to just make something like carved, I guess. I don't know, but feel free to just like chat and I don't know. We'll just have fun today. So that's kind of what we're doing. So, so we'll, we'll let, let everyone, everyone kind of come, come in, in here. here. Yay. Hi, Hi everybody. So, so excited, excited to see, see a bunch, bunch of people, people already logging, logging in. in. So, so if, if anyone, anyone is dressed, dressed up, up like, like me, me, I am a Slytherin. Slytherin. That's, that's my, my costume, costume from last year. year. I didn't, I didn't really, really do to use it, but I'm a Slytherin, Slytherin student from Hogwarts. If you're dressed up, you can do maybe do like hashtag WWC Halloween so I can see your costumes, or maybe, or maybe if you want me to see, see your little creations, creations you do today, today you, can you can do hashtag WWC Halloween on Instagram, Instagram so I can see everybody's everybody stuff. stuff. Ooh, Ooh, we, we have, have someone, someone from, from Turkey. Turkey. That's, That's awesome. awesome. All right. Any, is, is there, there an echo, echo you guys? guys? Okay. okay. I think, I think it, it might be one of my cameras. cameras. When, when I switch cameras, there might be an echo. So let me see if I can fix that really quick. I will be right back. Let's see. Let's see here. Is there an echo now while I'm on the second camera? Let me know if there's an echo on the second camera. Hey everybody. Just testing out to make sure everything's going okay. Let me know if there's an echo on this camera. No, no echo? Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So I think we might be good then. So let me, let me switch, switch to the main, main camera. camera. All, right, all right, so maybe so it's just an internet thing. thing. So, so I, I think, think everything's, everything's going, going okay with, with all the technology, technology here. here. Um, so, so, so is, is anyone, anyone dressed, dressed up tonight? Up or while we, we wait, wait for people, people to come in? Maybe? Um, all right, cool. cool. Everything's, everything's going, going good. good. This, this is, is my, my first, first time, time going, going live, live on, on YouTube, YouTube, so pretty excited, excited about, about that. that. So, there's so there's an, an echo, echo again. again. Let, Let me know, know if there's, there's an, an echo. echo. So, so my, my main, main camera. camera. Might, Might be my main, main camera. camera. The main, the main camera? camera? Okay, okay, so let me fix the main, main camera. camera. Be right, be right back. back. Hmm. All, right, All right, how's this, you guys? Think. Let's see. Is there, Is there still, still an, an echo, echo on this camera? camera? I'll, put I'll put the, the hashtag, hashtag here. here. Let, Let me, me know, know if there's an, an echo. echo. So I'm so streaming, streaming the first, first cam, cam on the, on the iPhone, iPhone, so, so let, let me see. see. Still an echo, okay. okay. All right. Hmm. Let me 
figure out the echo situation. see if we are back I think we're back I'm back on the stream so let me see if there is an echo now on the main camera all right so how's it going now you guys I think the iPhone was picking up um, when I switched camera the iPhone might have been picking up the sound also no echo cool so I think I solved the problem. I think it was just the iPhone picking up the sound too. Yay! <laughs> okay, so um, if everyone is kind of ready to start, if you were interested in the hashtag, um, if you want to post your costume or your little creations, it's hashtag WWC Halloween. And let's go ahead and get started. So let me switch to, I guess let me go ahead and get the wax going. So I have wax melted. So for these candles, I will switch and show you guys what I'm using to make these. All right. All right, so to make these, I have these little ball candles here. And this is going to be kind of like the base of our pumpkin. And I bought these in white. So I bought these from Hobby Lobby. And this is all paraffin wax because when you carve a candle, um, you can you need to use paraffin wax so soy wax isn't gonna work um, any container wax isn't gonna work for this and yeah so I don't know maybe I'll do a couple different jack-o-lantern faces and just kind of play with it so I have four here to play with so hopefully I don't mess up I, I did this like once a few weeks ago <laughs> so we'll see how it goes the second thing I have is these little tools here so these are like clay tools, but I used this one here. So this one, oops, let me get in the camera. This one, it's hard to get, like this one is gonna make the ridges of the pumpkin. And then to carve the face out, I'm gonna use this really sharp tool, but you can also use like a paring knife. So I think in the materials I told you guys, if you don't have this little round tool here, that you can just skip that part um, and just have like a totally round pumpkin. So that's kind of all I'm using here. It's just a little bit messy though. So I'm just gonna start off with one pumpkin. And let's see if I can even zoom in a little bit on this camera. We shall see. So, where did I buy the kit? I got it from Michaels. So I just bought like a clay carving kit from Michaels. All right. Uh, I think it was like $24 or something for all these tools. So the first step, so the whole process is gonna go, we're going to like carve out the ridges of the pumpkin and then we're gonna dip it into our wax, which I'll show you guys when I switch cameras. But I have orange wax with, um, I think I used four, yeah, 4625 and this is pillar wax. So pillar candle wax and just dyed it orange and then you can just buy these pre-made. So I was thinking this could also, you can do this for Christmas too. Like you can just make an ornament or something. So yes. So pretty much I just start like the four, I'll do like four kind of lines. So I'll just do two lines here and then two carvings here and we'll go from there. So while I'm doing this, we can kind of chat or if you guys have questions, um, feel free but I kind of start like really, really lightly because if you just dig in right away, it's going to like make your tool slip and then your line will go. So I know it's kind of hard to see because this is a, uh, like, I don't know, this is white, so it's kind of hard to see on the camera. So I'll try to get as clear as possible like that. So any plans for, I know there's like nothing really going on for Halloween, but yesterday I kind of saw um, they're doing like a lot of people are doing haunted like car washes and I thought that was really a unique way of doing like haunted houses because I like to do haunted houses but 
Of course, we can't do that this year. But I thought that was fun. But I think I'm actually just going to do a Halloween party. So at my office, I might just do like a little Halloween thing. And not like a huge party, literally just for my son and, <laughs> and my uh, nephew to uh, do something for Halloween. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool too, like a haunted car wash. I thought that was interesting. So you see, I'm just kind of carving and you, you can go as, I don't know, I think that's a pretty good depth to go into there. And this is my first time working with this candle actually. I had a different candle, so this one's carving really good. So I got this from Hobby Lobby. Candle, candle FX from Hobby Lobby. Yeah, so. In my, let's see what someone said. In my town, our car dealers are doing a drive around haunted yard. That's cool. Hi, Camber. How are you? So right now we're just, if anyone's tuning in, we're just talking about anything we're doing for Halloween that's kind of different instead of trick or treating. What's the name of the candle from Hobby Lobby? So it's this one here. And let me show you. So it's called Candle, Candle, ooh, Candle FX. And to be honest, this was $5.99. <laughs> Originally, I had purchased like $20 candles from Amazon, and I was like, man, this was $5.99. But that's cool. All right. And I'm thinking for trick or treaters, um, I went ahead and I just like prepackaged some candy last week into these trick or treat bags like these little paper bags and I'll just set them out and people can just come and grab one bag of candy. So I did one little line here and then I'm just gonna go to the opposite side and do the same thing on this side. Hello, I see a lot of my students in here. Thank you for showing up. And that's pretty much what I'm doing, so. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's kind of it kind of stinks because my son is really at that age. He's three, so he's at that age where he wants to kind of do everything. So last year he didn't really care, but this year he wants to kind of do stuff, and it, we haven't been able to. Alrighty, so this is cool. Is anyone else uh, following along? Let me know. Um, so originally I kind of was trying to play with, let's see a question here. Do you think it is easy to work with soya or paraffin? Uh, I like paraffin wax for what I do. So I think choosing between soya or paraffin is kind of just a preference. So the reason I chose paraffin for my candles is because the color takes easier, you know, and like for decorative candles, I think paraffin is kind of you know it's good because with soy you have to also worry about the frosting and stuff which normally that's not a big deal um, that's normal to have like frosting in the candles but for just what I'm doing I kind of like the look of how the color takes in paraffin um, soy is a little bit trickier with the scent throw a lot of my students uh, find that soy is kind of trickier to work with um, as far as trying to get that scent through, so there's a lot of experimenting going on. Uh, doo -doo -doo. You should be able to do this with pillar soy wax. I think any any pillar wax, I haven't tried the pillar soy, but I think a pillar wax should do okay. Um, I haven't personally tried it, but you can try it out. So now that we've kind of got these lines, we're gonna go the opposite, like this way. So we're gonna just do it this way now and carve it out. Uh, yeah, so I, I haven't tried it with the soy. But this is kind of, it's kind of fun. So I'm wondering, maybe I'll do two of these candles. We'll see. You are just nailing your scent throw with soy. It's very difficult with soy. It honestly <laughs> is really hard to get that scent throw. Um, I think uh, I think a lot has to do with maybe the fragrance oil too. So sometimes the fragrance oil itself plays a, a huge role in soy. Whereas paraffin, you can pretty much use um, any kind of fragrance, really. Um, I think soy, the, fra the selection of fragrance plays a big role. Ooh, she agrees. So maybe that's kind of the secret, making uh, 
selecting the right fragrances. And y'all know, I pretty much use candle science. <laughs> candle science, and I also use nature's, nature's Garden for fragrances. And I just started, sorry, I'm trying, I'm shaking the camera a bit, sorry. Um, trying to get my holiday line out. Adding 15% in your soy. Um, so when it comes to like fragrance oil, if you, um, adding more doesn't really help. So if your soy says like, okay, add 12%, adding 15% isn't really going to do anything. And that's kind of expensive. So I think like Scented Charisma agrees because I know she uses soy. I've actually bought some of her products, guys. Um, Scented Charisma on Instagram. And she has like these really cute wax melts. Uh, but yeah, I think like adding more is not going to really make a big difference. Can't hear? Okay, let me move my mic closer. Let's see. Hopefully you can hear better. Let me know if it's not if it's still not doing good. All right, so we got our little things here. I might do two just in case I mess up the first one. So let me move on to the next one in case. Um, I'll try to make this one quicker. If you guys have more questions, yay. Okay, you can hear, okay. Alrighty. Um, I do lives with my students, like we do little lives, but I've never done like multiple camera angles and all this kind of tech stuff. So it was new, it was different. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've actually tried, oh, thank you. Thank you, Mary. I think this would be kind of cool to do like more lives. It's just kind of hard with candles because you have to wait for things to like set. So. But this way is, is not too bad because I'm just carving right now. On the classes, I'm actually working on that right now. I just got the sales page done. Someone finished the sales page for me. Um, and just working on a few little things. I'm hoping in the next couple weeks I can do that. It was a little busy for me, like for two months. Sorry, camera. For two months, it was really busy and I just could not get to it. It was like the orders were kind of busy and... It was really hard but sales page is done and just a few updates because like um, when I launched that course there's a whole bunch of new stuff that I wanted to add so hopefully we can get that going soon I'm moving faster with this one um, I was wanting to try like candle carving like actual candle carving with them where you dip it and it makes these really cool designs but the equipment for that is like a thousand dollars so I was like this will do <laughs> all right so I think I'm kind of done with my two little candles here so let me switch cameras all right guys so we have our two candles and this is what I was talking about when I was saying the wax. I just have it in this glass here. Um, so if you do candle dipping, uh, you want to just get a container where you're not going to... If you do like a big bowl, you're going to have to fill the bowl up with wax to fully submerge. And also, if you don't want to get your fingers too close to the hot wax, maybe you want to use tongs or something. I'm, I'm okay. Alright, so I'm going to actually grab... Oh, um, do you mind filling up? a plastic jug of water I think there's one under by the under the table so I'm gonna wait for water because we need water to dip this all right so let me kind of and before we start dipping if you do want to do this you want to have like your faces that you want to do already like locked in and then you want to have everything kind of ready because it sets quick so usually when I dip I'm gonna do about six dips so I'll do a dip in the wax and then I'll dip it in the water and kind of pat it dry with a paper towel and then I'll repeat probably about six times and then immediately you need to start carving so I have my tool ready and I learned that if you carve first with the like carve the mouth first um, I start with the mouth first because everything kind of starts to set 
And if you start with the eyes and go through the mouth, if you like do it that way, I find that the mouth gets a little bit weird and I don't have an example. Um, I guess maybe because the mouth is kind of the biggest feature and you want the wax to be super soft uh, before you, you know, when you do the mouth. So I'll kind of show you. And let's see, we have a little comment here. Ooh, oh wow, you opened your business in Turkey. Congratulations. That's awesome. I'm so glad. I love like, I remember the first time someone kind of reached out to me was through YouTube and I'm going to start dipping now. So I'm going to dip here and then dip here and wipe it. So the first time someone reached out to me um, about starting her business, she was in Malaysia and I was so shocked. You see how that comes out, you guys, that color. And then we're going to dip it here in the water. And that kind of motivated me to start just keep doing the videos because that was so awesome. Um, she opened her business all the way in Malaysia and she sent me a picture of her first kind of little pop-up shop and it was really cool. So two, and you can see how it's already looking orangey. Yay. And then three. All right, and dip in the water. Kind of wipe it off. Four. It's kind of like I'm really concentrating here so I don't drop this in the wax. Okay. And uh, doo -doo. why do you dip it in the water? So I honestly just saw videos and I'm I'm thinking that it just gets it to set so you can keep dipping. So I'm thinking that's why they do it. <laughs> I was watching candle carving videos and I saw that they all dipped it in the water. So the cold water just kind of gets it like really to set so you can start like carving. And for Courtney, um, classes, I'm thinking about three weeks-ish, maybe two, three weeks-ish. I just got the, um, the sales page finished. Someone finished the sales page for me and just kind of working on a few updates. All right, I think I'm gonna do one more dip. I lost count, so I'll just do one more. And then while I'm gonna switch screens so I can just like carve right away. So let me go to the second camera and then so I can just start carving. All right, so I'm gonna start with the mouth and <laughs> we'll kind of go from there. So I'll do my last dip in here. And then as you dip, the candle will expand some so make sure whatever container, uh, it will fit the candle. So we've got this, and then I'm going to start with the mouth. So I'm going to pick a side that looks nice. So I'm going to pick this side, and then I'm going to just do... I put two dots so I can see where the mouth is going to end. And then I think I'm going to do like this, and then I'm going to put a little tooth in it like this. And then like that, and then we'll... And then I'm going to finish off the mouth and then pull out the wax from it. So you can kind of gotta move quick. All right, so pull out the wax. Stirred. All right, now we can move on. That's the most nerve wracking part <laughs> is the mouth. All right, so I'm going to move on to the eyes. Let's hope I can get that. And as this sets, you're going to see more like it'll start to, I don't know, when you carve it, it'll have this little, like white kind of uh, outer edge kind of thing. And it just doesn't look good. And honestly, this wax is kind of a, it's almost as if there's soy in this one because my other candles did not do that. But it turned out cool. It's like that. Nice. And then for the bottom, it, when it comes like it's all weird, so if you want it to stand straight, you just kind of carve the bottom so it stands straight and you can test it out by like doing that. Make sure it stands nice and straight. That's cute. Oh, And that was kind of quick, right? But you got to move quick. So that's why I told you guys in the directions to have your faces like locked in so that you know what you're about to do you know, draw <laughs> or carve. And then sometimes there's these imperfections and I notice like for that, um, if you carve that away, it's just gonna make it worse. So I think stuff like this is stuff gets trapped in the, the wax like while you're dipping it. So 
I don't know, I guess in between dips, like be careful about trapping other wax in here, or maybe it made a bubble or something like that. But I think it's just a matter of like doing it over and over. I've only done this one other time, so that's all the advice I can offer. I don't see any comments. Ooh, you guys are excited to try it. Like even with Christmas coming up, I think it you could, um, earlier I mentioned you probably could do like ornaments or something. So let's try another one. Let me switch cameras. All right, so we got one and then let's try another one. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do another six dips here. So dip and then and then the water. All right. So um, I don't know how many people here have a candle business or if you just do candles for fun, but do you guys have like your um, holiday line together? Or how's that going for some people? I'm kind of behind, honestly. <laughs> Ooh, a snowman, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Ooh. I'm a little behind on the holiday season, so don't know how that's going to go. And I noticed that when you kind of light them um, and like there's water, it kind of has a little sizzle to it. And I remember I tried it again and I made sure to like pat it really good in between, um, in between dips. And then it it didn't sizzle on that one so like when you light it you'll kind of hear the water sizzling and it's not gonna do anything crazy it's not gonna like blow up but um, it might make the wick go out behind on your holiday line working on holidays two cents you'll be testing okay trying to find something creative for Christmas yeah I'm, I'm in the same boat I think I'm just um, doing i'm just thinking too hard about it i always do that it's almost dropped it in the wax all right and you can see i already know i got something stuck in the i had something stuck on this pumpkin too Ooh, someone's about to launch oh hi from brazil hello hello lillian we're just dipping candles at the moment and if you guys are I think this I'll, I'll put this on replay on YouTube so if you ever want to like rewatch it you can do that I'm making a mess with the water Ooh. so someone's about to launch their business that's awesome I actually lost count, so I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm gonna make this my last one because I'm spilling water. All right, let me switch camera angles and we'll carve again. All right, let's try this. So mine, this one turned out really bad. So my first one was actually better, but we'll keep going. We'll do it anyway. All right, so I'm just gonna do a smiley face pumpkin and then carve like. Face. <laughs> this one did not turn out good. Carve the little face. Oh, and then carve this out. And this. All right. So this one actually turned out worse than the first one. That's okay. <laughs> Let me look at your comments here. Hi, new to your channel in the candle biz. Your videos have been the best. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate ya. Working on the holiday line. Ordering wicks from Amazon. Hmm. I have never ordered wicks from Amazon before. That's new. Am I going to be doing another mega candle? I did one in my Halloween special video. I don't know if a lot of people like or if that went into a lot of people's inboxes or what. I kind of knew that me doing something that different would not probably do good on my channel. So I don't think a lot of people watched it, 
but I did a Halloween special on YouTube and there's a mega candle in there but it didn't um, didn't turn out how I wanted so that was the latest one that I did you like the texture it looks like a pumpkin it kind of does it's not too perfect it just looks like a little pumpkin pumpkin guy and honestly I think this wax is like almost like there's soy in it or something the way it's chipping off I don't know and I'm just gonna carve the bottom till it stands straight you've tried wicks from Amazon you don't like them they said a lot oh, okay I always just buy my stuff from actually I buy my wicks locally from AAA candle supply so there's that one let me switch cameras and then we can just chat all right so we have our two little little guys here so that's pretty much how you do it and that was kind of fun so do you guys have any other questions or anything else you want to like talk about so someone said wicks from amazon they stood a lot um i guess it depends too so kind of just depends on the kind of wick you get are you able to paint them you know i've never um I don't know exactly what kind of paint to safely use for candles so I've never tried it um, in my mega candle I'll use like food coloring but I, I've never done that for like actual products to send out to people because I'm not sure like if that's okay so I, I actually don't know what kind of paint is like best for like to use for candles I haven't figured that out yet um, I could paint them I don't know like let me know what kind of paint because I don't know I've used food coloring um, food coloring seems like the safest thing but I don't know like what what to paint candles with um, I've heard of some people using like acrylic paint I, I don't know that's kind of sounds weird I don't know <laughs> I don't know if you can use acrylic paint on candles but apparently like pillar candles the um, there's a lot of different ones that they don't melt on the outside uh, so maybe that's why they paint them because they just melt going down and then there's some pillar candles where they do like the whole thing will eventually you know melt down to a little thing so what do you think about profit margin on candles 25 to 50 percent uh, like profit margin okay um, so typically candles profit margin you'd say like um, you just do the formula if it if it takes you two dollars to make a candle times that by two eight and times that by two but also think of um other my microphone other things that go into your candle like the packaging and like all your other overhead expenses like your website and stuff like that so that's kind of how i think of pricing and i think um 50 percent like you always want to mark it up um, so two dollars times two and then times another two because when you slash it in half your that's kind of like your wholesale price so whatever your retail price is you still need to make a profit margin if you sell it for half the price I tried candles today for the first time it was harder than I thought it would be <laughs> um, I actually had to tell this story recently I did an interview with who did I do an interview with? I did an interview with a comp. I think it was, uh, I don't remember the company, but it was, I posted it on Instagram and they asked me, I think it was Authority Magazine, they asked me one big mistake I made um, when I first started my candle business and it was because, it was when I over wicked a candle and I had no ideas, it was, I was using soy wax and whatever wicks, I had no idea like how important the wick was and so I was test burning the candle and then when I came back into the room like everything had soot in the room like the chair was covered in soot everything and I was like oh okay so it's harder than I I thought it would be so that's kind of when I realized candle making is really like a science uh where do i buy my strawberry mold so on the strawberry mold you can make your own so you can do like silicone you can do silicone mixes and you can buy them on amazon and you can just use real stuff so you can make a mold with anything you want so you can use a strawberry any like oreo cookies um you can just make your own molds with like silicone mixes 
from Memphis, process of rebranding, and can launch online. You've been binge watching my channel for the second time. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, oh, thank you. The candle link for the super chat. Thank you. My neighbor <laughs> always be trying to negotiate. And I had the guts to say no. She told me about her friend who makes candles. Okay, so people, they don't realize, like, your price is set at the price. And it's like, it's really hard when it's like family and friends because they'll want discounts and stuff. And I know that's hard. <laughs> like people think cause they know you that they, that it's just easy to get a discount. But I guess they don't think that like, you know, your price is, it literally takes care of everything and you only get a little bit of whatever you, whatever the, you know, the price you set. So, um, oh, flowers on top of candles this is a good question because i was actually purchasing insurance i was switching insurance companies recently and i realized i never put anything like flowers or anything into the candle because my main concern wasn't that it was going to burn up um, because honestly i've never heard of flowers or anything i've even tested it and i've never seen any crazy th stuff happen but my main concern was insurance so I actually saw there's a special insurance you can buy for candles for if you do flowers or if you do gemstones. And um, I think the insurance, the insurance I use is called Indie Business Network. And I don't know if it was them who had this special insurance, but it's like a special add-on. Um, it was either the Indie Business Network or the Soap Makers Guild that had that special insurance. So you can put them in there. You just, like insurance wise, you need to make sure you have that covered. Um, but safety wise, I've never like, I've never really heard of anything crazy happening and testing it myself, I've never seen like anything um, that's alarming. But of course, whenever you put things, you know, inside of candles that aren't candle wax, um, I'm sure the insurance will say it's kind of a liability. Uh, when did I start paying myself? So I think I, I don't know where I talked about this before, but like before I quit my job, I kind of saved a lot of money and I never took PTO. So that money was saved and I didn't start paying myself probably until this year. And even now I don't like pay myself like a whole bunch I, I like to leave a lot of the money in the business so that i can pour more money into doing creative things so like the whole halloween video thing that was that cost a lot of money <laughs> but it was something i wanted to do and it was fun it was a great learning experience so for that you know i bought a drone i rented an airbnb um, i bought materials for the candle the, i think the materials for the dress alone were probably almost 200 dollars. so i spent a lot of money on that video and the money comes from you like my business so i i don't usually take too much out of my business so um and i do have like we have a two income household and i'd saved a lot of money beforehand um so that's kind of like when i when i quit my job i think i talked about this in candle science i it was probably about uh, two years of me planning of like i need to pay off my cars i need to um you know have at like no debt you know so that I would be able to quit my job comfortably so even now like I probably didn't start taking money out for myself until this year but even now I don't take a whole bunch of money out uh, I just like having the money there so I can bring my ideas to life to me that's more fun than um, like you know spending the money on other stuff uh, but I know everyone's like situations different so I guess it, it's gonna vary for everybody when you want to like pay yourself the amount you want to like I still pay myself but it's not it's not a ton I like to just keep the money there uh, da, 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 da. can I put coconut or cinnamon powder on the candle I think for cinnamon it clogs your wick uh, coconut I've never used coconut but cinnamon definitely clogs your wick so then the flame gets really small what's the name of the insurance so I use indie business network um, and when you get insurance, I learned this recently, when you get insurance, you need to make sure it has product liability because general liability is not the coverage you need. So even if an if a, if a insurance company says that they cover you and it's general liability, 
um, I found out that like if your candle burns someone else's house up, which is why I pretty much are getting insurance. So like if I give this candle to somebody and it burns their house down, general liability won't necessarily cover that. It's product liability that you need. So that's why I switched over to Indie Business Network and also Soap Makers Guild has it too. Um, doo -doo -doo. Let's see. Oh, you love the holiday video. Well, thank you. It was a great video. <laughs> I just, I knew like it was something that I wanted to do just like on creative reasons. And I knew it was like, usually when you have a YouTube channel, you kind of stick to like this kind of formula. And I knew that if I was going to make something that like, like left field, a lot of people weren't going to watch it. And, um, like I just, I knew people weren't really gonna watch it. And I knew like maybe people who like Halloween might actually like the video. So I think the people who like Halloween and that kind of stuff enjoyed it, which makes me happy. Um, so I wasn't really doing that, <laughs> hoping to get views, but I think doing stuff different, like doing something a little bit out of your realm kind of helps to like boost your creativity and maybe, I don't know, like refreshes your creative whatever. So doing that really helped me kind of, um, I don't know, it was a nice like reset almost. Uh, when I start making money, my goal is to save and just keep reinvesting in my business. That's what I do. So I like to save the money and just kind of reinvest in the business and like buying all this stuff, um, it takes a lot of money. So buying cameras, microphone, drones, camera stabilizers, um, lights, it takes, it takes a lot of money. But like when I first started my channel, definitely did not have all that stuff I had um I think my camera I still have it. it's a good camera a Canon T3i from like 2014 that's all I had um and I just had to just keep working up from there and I don't think my channel got monetized for probably a year into it so I was doing a lot of work and I didn't wasn't really getting money out of it but it does pay off so I know a lot of people are getting interested in like starting a channel and trying um to like get multiple income streams and I think that's the best way to kind of get your business going is trying to find ways of how you can like get multiple income streams going so I don't know that's kind of how how I did it and yeah uh, indie business maker oh yeah indie business network and soap makers guild so Markeisha has it exact so if you want to look at her comment that's exactly who it is um, the insurance people and it's really hard to find that product liability insurance those were the only two places that I saw and it also covers if you want to do like candles and bath and body the insurance covers that too um, do you think it's more easy to sell on Etsy or Amazon uh, okay easy like as far as setting up Etsy Amazon is a little bit more tricky to set up and but I think once you get the hang of Amazon FBA, it's like you can get more sales through Amazon um, when you have the two day shipping. But if you just set up Amazon and then you don't have the prime badge, no one's going to buy your product really. So uh, whenever my products aren't don't have the prime badge, I really don't see sales from Amazon. Um, but as soon as I kind of send them into the warehouse, I get sales and it takes a long time for that to get checked in and for it to get like checked into the warehouse. So it's kind of hard for me to keep up with the Amazon stock because it'll sell. And then by the time another shipment comes, um, like I have a huge gap where I don't have anything in the warehouse. Um, Etsy is a good starter. I always like to say going with Etsy is good because you get to know SEO and it's really easy to set up. Like you can have your Etsy shop set up like in an hour. Uh, so it's kind of a good introductory like place to set up and get your first products up. Like if you start with Amazon, it's gonna be like a little bit more like difficult to set everything up, figure out how you're supposed to get sales. Pretty much the way to get sales on Amazon is through the, the warehouse, um, but yeah. Do, do, do. let's see everything just goes back into my business yeah <laughs> yeah so probably a year into my business so I think yeah I started in 2018 so from 2018 to 2019 I really didn't take any money out of my business I just kept it 
in there and just kept it going for um, paying for other things. And it wasn't until like this year where I decided, okay, let me take some money out um, because I had to buy insurance. So the main reason was insurance for like health insurance. So that's pretty much what I do now. Uh, Going live is a nice marketing tool, at least on Facebook, IG. Uh, I've never, I don't like Facebook, so I don't, <laughs> I've never, I have a Facebook page, but I don't usually use it that much. Uh, I, Instagram's a good place to go live, yeah, for sure. Uh, you love your Etsy. How did you market when you first started your business? Uh, okay, so I started with YouTube. So in 2018, I, bef- like when I first started my YouTube channel, I had actually just kind of found a, my product. So in October, I launched my fir- very first little decorative candle. And then, uh, like I, I've told this story before, so if you've heard it before, I'm sorry, but the first decorative candle never sold, no one ever bought it. And then I made another one and it was Harry Potter themed. Um, it, it was like a wizarding theme little candle. And then that one sold like 200 units. And that kind of gave my shop a little bit of a boost on Etsy. I think it sold 200 units in a month or so. So that kind of gave a little bit of boost in my shop and I kind of just kept putting a little bit of products out and then I started my YouTube channel and the YouTube channel was kind of like a guide of how I got you know, the Etsy shop going and then I just kept from there. So mainly YouTube has been kind of my marketing thing. I would say that's like my main thing. Um, and then Etsy SEO. So even before YouTube, I used Etsy learning the search engine optimization because of course with YouTube when I started a lot of people weren't watching so no one was really buying from YouTube so I was still relying on Etsy search um, to get sales Uh, and I still do like I still always like think of the search algorithm and all that on Etsy so I was uh, learning a lot about Etsy search and how to use search and figure out what people are looking for and just to give you like some insight don't make Harry Potter products like I had that one product and I called it the sorting hat and um, I called it the sorting hat and then in the tags I was like saying Harry Potter and then when I took that product to Amazon Amazon shut it down and I had no idea that first of all I had no idea sorting hat was copywritten but I should have known because that's obvious and then you should always research this stuff so never use copy copy or yeah copyright items and then in the tags you are not supposed to use copyright so from here on I don't ever do anything Um, so I changed it to the sorting candle and I changed all the tags so it never said Harry Potter again and it still sold so it still sold like it was just wizard something Um, and it was still my most popular candle and then it was the very last candle that I discontinued from my previous line and I'm gonna bring it back but of course it's gonna be like wizard something something but um, I'm gonna bring it back in the new design probably for the holidays uh, does it how let's see what is a great process on creating candle scent and getting a good throw with soy wax um, soy wax is a little bit difficult to get the throw um, it just really depends on the scent you're using so like the stronger scents are good are going to naturally have a better hot throw so if you're using really floral light scents it's going to be a little bit harder uh, so soy wax there's just a lot of experimenting with fragrances when it comes to hot throw and my candles are paraffin so I don't work with soy a ton so I don't have any like secrets or anything um, to tell you on the soy so it really is I just noticed with my students that a lot of them there's some people some of my students who swear by soy and they have no problem but I do get a lot of frustration because in our community about soy wax and um, I've actually tested soy coconut wax, the C6 Cargill wax, and that has a amazing scent throw. So for people who are still wanting to be in that realm of like the biodegradable wax or whatever, um, soy coconut is really, really good compared to like soy, just soy. So that's what I learned. So if you if you're having problem with soy, try the soy coconut. Uh, did you have any fear starting your own business? Uh, yeah like I've kind of always had little businesses before 
Um, but I'm kind of a, I've always been a person that when I want to do something, I'll just do it. And like, <laughs> I've just always dabbled in business before. I think even like in fifth grade, I did a thing where I had two people bring like little toys to school. And so we all brought our toys and sold them on the playground and then like split up the money. <laughs> so that was kind of my first business. And then after that, um, what was it? I, I think I dabbled in like online business was Amazon. So once I saw how like kind of it worked, I don't know if I really had any fears, but it was more so like determination on how, like just figuring out how to do something. Um, I think that's what it, what it was like figuring out how to do everything. And um, I didn't really take it seriously. Like I didn't think Amazon was going to be a full time job. I just thought it was interesting that you could just sell little books or board games or things like that online. So, um, yeah. That's kind of um, how it went for me. But I know a lot of people do have fears about like putting yourself out there, especially like nowadays having a business, you ha it has to come with some kind of social media unless you're just this really in demand niche business that people need and nobody else has. Um, so a lot of people need social media and I think that's where um, some people get the little anxiety about having to get on camera or having to put yourself out there and um, I think that's kind of like the hardest part sometimes and I still do kind of have troubles with um, not literally being on social media but keeping up with it like keeping up with putting videos that kind of gets a little bit stressful and stuff but uh, yeah there's always that kind of like lingering there's always it's always something out there that that can hold you back but when you uh, just try it out it's not as hard as maybe you I think people are just a little hard on themselves. So I think if you just try it out and dip your foot in, uh, you're not gonna be perfect the first time, but just keep working on it. Let's see. How much is the candle making course? So I think, I don't have it off the top of my head, but I think it's 375 um, at the moment. I think that's what it is, yeah. Let's see, beeswax, beeswax is hard to work with. Bees, and it's not hard to work with, but you gotta be quick because it sets really, really fast. Um, and I notice it doesn't really have a good, like, scent throw. Like, it's not gonna be a strong scent throw. It's really light. Um, a light scent throw, but I think a lot of people like the way you kinda get the little, I don't know if all beeswax has this, but some might have a little scent of honey. Um, and yeah. Oh, thank you from Canada. I appreciate it. Um, beeswax is, I think that's like a niche thing, like people who are searching for beeswax and it's a little bit more expensive. So I think customers may not care if it's beeswax or not. And this is another thing. I think a lot of candle makers get caught up on um, like the candle and like having the the different waxes. Customers don't really care. Like maybe some might care about having the soy or um, but for the most part, a lot of customers I run into don't even know like a soy or a paraffin or a beeswax. Um, so when you market it, maybe uh, like you may think that a customer that that's the selling point, the wax, but not all of the time. I think most customers are they don't really know too much about the different waxes. But beeswax is OK if you have like that customer base, um, maybe. It is a little bit more expensive, so the, the candle price is going to be higher. So I would like say maybe if you're doing a beeswax, kind of do like market it as luxury. Because if you do like kind of a container wax, just a little container of beeswax, um, it's probably going to be around a 15, 18, like, you know, higher price. So uh, if you can market it more so on the luxury side, that might help too. Uh, beeswax for scent throw, uh, like it's it's not as strong from what I've tested. I've tested and it's not super strong um, when it comes to scent throw. It's like a light scent throw. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to do local markets and pop-up shops, but I'm shy and it's harder without support. So I'm not very good at selling stuff either. So I don't like approaching people. So when I do pop-ups, I don't really like to like stand there. So my husband does that part. He does, he'll stand at the front and he um, encourages people to smell the candle. So if you say, instead of saying like, do you want to, 
you know, buy a candle or do you like candles? <laughs> if you give them an action and say, hey, smell this candle, um, they feel compelled to like smell it because you just told them to do it. <laughs> it's like sometimes, a lot of the times they'll go smell it. A lot of the times, um, very rarely do they like turn away. Uh, so when you do it that way, it kind of starts the conversation. Uh, so that's how he does it, but I'm not good at it. So I always bring him so I can feel you there. I'm not really good at selling or uh, I'm not a good salesperson. <laughs> Uh, coconut wax oh yeah um, I mentioned earlier coconut coconut and soy the Cargill um, I'll type it in here because Cargill C6 is really good for uh, it has a really good scent throw like really really good uh, I was testing it with a peppermint now it was a peppermint but I made peppermint mocha out of soy and then out of that C6 wax and the C6 like was really good like it fills my hole downstairs and then the soy did it now on the soy I probably could have let it sit longer I think I let it sit like three days or so um, but on the coconut wax I didn't have to let it sit long so maybe it was my curing that didn't like that you know for the soy but on the Cargill's the coconut soy it did really good uh, let's see all right so yeah this is fun. I'm enjoying talking with you guys on here. We're having fun. Um, so those are some really great questions. <laughs> so do you guys have any, like earlier I talked about plans for Halloween and stuff. So, oh, and I also talked about a hashtag. So let me type it here. I said, if you dressed up for Halloween to do this little thing, or if you made this and you want to show me, you can do hashtag WWC Halloween on Instagram so I can see it and let's see I have been making melts for two years and venturing to candles but I've noticed in the last year a lot of candle businesses are popping up are you worried about standing out I like this I like this a lot so yes I have noticed 100% a lot of people are starting candle businesses um, but I I'm it doesn't bother me or it's not something I'm worried about because I feel like the products um, that I make, even though they're not original, they're not like, I'm not the only one making decorative candles or anything, but I feel like the, um, I feel like my marketing is pretty like standout and I feel like the product is pretty standout even though like other people make the same thing. And I think there's markets for everything. So someone who likes my candles or someone who likes luxury candles may not like my candles or um, I think there's markets for everybody. So I think the the easiest, like the best thing you can do for a new candle business is creating your own little, you know, niche for yourself. And it doesn't have to reinvent the wheel, but I think um, just a few little new creative things that you can put onto it. So I definitely have some ideas that have never been done. I mean, even with the Hallow's Eve box, um, you know, I made the video to go along with that and um, that's kind of different. I don't know if anyone else has, I mean, it's a candle, it's a decorative candle, nothing new, but it had like a whole little backstory to it. And I think the, the key is just having new things to bring to the table. So uh, I talked about this with my students, but I saw a company that does the, um, candles and it's just a container candle nothing decorative but she puts little QR codes on her labels so it goes with a playlist so it's not reinventing the wheel but it's like a, a little it's something different so um, I don't know I'm I I don't really look at competition or um, I think once I found my niche it just made it a little bit easier to be okay and not have to um, think about what everyone else was doing so having a niche is a, a really good things to think about when you're starting your candle business. A ton of candle businesses. Yes, and I see like some people are saying it's too saturated and stuff, which there are a ton of candle businesses, um, but I still find things that like, I, I still find niches that are very small, that are unique. So there's a niche that's like a horror, horror, like scary, um, <laughs> candle company and they have taken off i think it's called um oh i cannot think of it um eerie candle co eerie candle company 
and they are doing really well on like I've seen on Instagram like they sell out and I also see like I think it's just a matter of finding that target market and it has to be something you enjoy so if you enjoy scary movies then that's gonna be like your niche and for me I'm a little bit quirky I enjoy like um, just like almost like Willy Wonka-esque kind of stuff or uh, my whole bakery thing is almost like 1960s kind of I always think of that when I think of like my brand um, so yeah I think even though there is a, a lot of businesses popping out I think that's what makes I think that's what kind of makes you stand out is when you bring something a little bit different to it your own little twist yeah definitely uh, congratulations on your success oh thank you thank you Kimberly for that nice message everyone's journey is different exactly so everyone's gonna have their own little niche and um, like something I saw a lot is like when you when I was first researching I would see um, a candle company doing some doing well and then I would see like a lot of people do the same thing they were doing and I was like if someone's already doing good at this the very first book candle company um, is frost beard candles and they've been on Etsy since Etsy was a thing and I think if you go to their Etsy shop they have over a hundred thousand sales and they're the very first company to do the um, the booked theme candles the library theme and stuff like that and then after that a lot of people started doing it and there's other companies that have success with the library theme but maybe they do it a little bit different so it's like um, <clears throat> even though someone else already is doing it maybe they have a different spin on it so I don't know I just think being like original don't try to like you know copy someone else exact because even you know if they're successful um, I it's, it's going to be hard to kind of get the customers to come to you if you're making the exact same thing so just a little bit of a spin just like someone else said um, launching your business next weekend <clears throat> any advice please um i would say just take notes just take notes on how the launch goes if there's anything you can do better um always learning process so whenever you first launch there's always get these weird things that pop up that you never thought would be a thing to worry about so you might run into those issues um, like when you launch of course when I launched my whole course business it was like a whole different world there um, with the stripe pl payment platform was a whole different thing and learning how all of the payments work and separating out all the uh, it was a lot so there's always you know room to take notes and figure out how you can improve as it goes on so that's what I would say just just go with the launch and you know see see what you can improve on. Um, yeah, this is why I don't follow other candle companies. I follow my personal page by my business page. Yeah, I kind of I kind of know what you mean because like when I started, um, I didn't join any Facebook groups. Like when I started the new candle business, I think back in the first when I first started candle business in two thousand fifteen. Um, I saw that I was just looking at all the other candle businesses so on Etsy I would go and scroll 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 see what everybody else was doing and then that really didn't give me any inspiration because I was just like almost subconsciously like looking at what other people doing and um, seeing what I could do so I didn't really have anything original it was just it was a candle with a label it had no niche no theme um, I didn't I don't know there was nothing really to it so when I restarted in 2018 I didn't join any candle groups or anything which I'm sa not saying you shouldn't because you do get new information but always keep like a fresh mind about um, just just make sure you, you know have a fresh mind about like what you can do different so like how can you make it possible like if you have an idea like how can you make that a thing um, possible so when I um, did the the new candles it was just not working for me and there's no tutorials on how to do the candles with the lid um, and make it burn correctly so it took me a lot of testing um, and sometimes you just got to keep working at it until it works so sometimes what you need is not out there and <clears throat> sorry you may have to figure it out on your own but I'm not saying don't join groups or candle groups because it's very useful um, but just keep a fresh 
perspective and don't be afraid of doing something totally totally new uh why am i the only one to not start because of trademark i want to start but i'm scared of someone stealing ah so this is something a lot of people are worried about when it comes to like being on social media and like especially youtube they're worried about like if i put my product on youtube someone's going to steal the idea well even if someone like i've had i've never talked about it but people have stolen my idea like um not for the new candles but for the old one for sure there was a company and they had the same label the same exact style um, like I said dessert candles nothing new but this company had this like the label was they even used like the same graphics it was weird but I don't know I didn't worry about it because like I'm the original so if they are literally just stealing my idea then they're always going to be like two steps behind because if the ideas are coming from my head then I mean they're not being original <laughs> so uh, people will uh, like as your business grows people will steal your ideas and um, copy but I mean there's nothing you can really I mean I've seen successful companies for instance PF Candle Co they started on Etsy and I remember seeing them around the same time I saw Frostbeard candles and then I saw like the exact same style like people started stealing their style after they had more success but if you look at them now they're in Urban Outfitters they're all over you know the markets and it doesn't matter if people steal because they are the go-to for that style so even if someone steals my candle design it's it's you know I can't worry about it too much all I can do is just focus on creating new things and just focus on you know my business so it happens but um, I think that if you're the original creator then just keep with your original ideas um, I'm a candle group but I don't do follow for follows groups can be helpful very true groups can be helpful um, yeah they won't last long if they're just uh, creating your ideas uh, trademarking so trademarking is very complicated and I do have my trademark in the process um, so I don't I know it's like a whole lawyer thing um, but you might have to contact someone about trademarking I don't know if you can trademark your design so even if like um, I trademark my business name like I said, dessert candles aren't original to me. So how can I trademark? So someone can probably just make, you know, something very similar, but that's okay. Um, as long as you just keep on moving and keep your business going um, and just keep original, I think you're just gonna stretch yourself out if you worry or worry about it too much. Now, if someone's copying you exact, exact with your business name and everything, that's where you should probably get concerned because then they're kind of like, you know that's legal issues so that's a part where I would get a little irritated <laughs> uh, but if someone's just copying my designs I'm like oh, that's fine uh, trust your spirit there you go all right yes scented charisma is coming with some good little stuff in the comments too so thank you so that was fun chatting with you guys and I don't know I have some really cool ideas for um, hopefully next year uh, I have some really cool ideas that I want to bring to the channel so I'm excited for that so yes and I am getting hot in this like Hogwarts outfit here with the lights <laughs> so do you guys have anything else you want to talk about this was fun this was a fun little candle carving and chat session so I think one of my favorite creators, she's also doing a live tonight, which I'm excited about too, um, Christine McConnell. I'm one of her patrons and her, if you guys like Halloween, like I like Halloween, and if you want Halloween year round, you need to be one of her patrons because her content is like A1. She's like a big inspiration for, um, for me. So I'm like excited to see that tonight uh not advertising anyone but are there any brands you would suggest for fragrance and essential oils oh i always use candle science um candle science and nature's garden i don't use essential oils too much i've i've only used them once in beeswax candles 
So um, Brambleberry has essential oils. Uh, I, I'll buy stuff from them every once in a while. Brambleberry.com for like soap making or bath bombs, which I haven't done in a long time. But they have essential oils too. But I like Candle Science because they have really fast shipping and then the, um, the fragrances are really good. And then Nature's Garden has a lot of good like um, wacky kind of scents. So they have some really unique scents over there. Let's see, will I do another live? Uh, I might, like I'm not against it. I just have to think of a way to make it kind of interesting. Like if I'm pouring a candle, I don't know if that's too interesting. So I'll, I'll have to think of something. Maybe for the holidays, I'll try to do something. Um, should do it more often. How do you get up the money to start? Ooh, I like that one. Um, so I've uh, talked about a little bit, but when I started, I started selling stuff on Amazon. So I started, um, selling board games and I remember coming across some YouTube videos of people who were doing something on Amazon and it was called retail arbitrage where you go to places like Walmart or you go to Goodwill and you pick things up and then you sell them on Amazon like you can sell used stuff on Amazon so I actually found really good success with board games because a lot of people get them for Christmas they play them once or they don't open them and then people buy them like as gifts um, and there are board game like collectors and stuff so that was kind of a thing I did and I didn't have a kid at this time so I had <laughs> the opportunity to go out to different Goodwills and just buy up all the board games and then resell them like some of these board games I would pay like five dollars and get like fifty dollars from a board game so that's one way I was able to like kind of build up the money and I just remember the first time I really saw like the potential in online business. I had sent a whole bunch of stuff to Amazon, board games, all this stuff. And then I went swimming with my brother. And then when I came out of the swimming pool, I had like $80 in my Amazon account. And I was like, whoa, I just like made money while I was swimming. And then <laughs> that was like, yeah, a lot of people could do this. You just, you know, buy these things and sell them, get some extra money. So that's how I kind of, got the ex the money to do like my first kind of to get all the stuff for the candle business back in 2015 get all the equipment and stuff um that's what i did uh let's see Doo -doo -doo. fragrance name a person can you type the name of the person you follow so which person so like a business or um a candle business or anything let's see so I don't know some people do come to me and they're like I don't know what to do like how do I get the money and there's lots of things you can do online like we live in a time where just think about it, before to start a business you would have to like buy a building buy insurance buy all the inventory to put in the business like it costs a lot of money but nowadays you can start a business and then you don't even need the thing you just need a picture of the thing and then you can just like make money so that's really neat um, what's my favorite season to create candles I'm I'm a Halloween person October is my favorite like October November are my favorite months I like fall so I always go out for like I go big for like Halloween but then when Christmas comes I don't have like anything big planned <laughs> which is probably the time I should go big because more I think more people like Christmas than Halloween so I usually like to put a lot of energy into Halloween um, but like like I said earlier in the in the beginning of the live I said I really don't have anything planned for Christmas besides just candles so let's see uh, da -da. Uh, oh for the Halloween so eerie was it um, if you're talking about like the company for the Halloween candles that I this is the like spooky Halloween people that I saw on Instagram. Um, and let's see. Hello, Kim. How did you pick your staple scents? I just picked what I liked and what people were buying a lot of. So um, one, you know, scent that stays around is strawberry shortcakes, like my number one caramel popcorn. So it's just a matter of like what I noticed people are buying a lot. But my like line kind of started with bakery scents and I'm kind of going out of the um, the realm of bakery scents now so I'll do kind of like more fresh scents like 
uh, I think for the Halloween one, I had one that really was not food scented at all. It was a very like earthy kind of scent. So I stuck with the whole bakery theme when I started my business. It was almost like a little cake shop kind of theme. Um, so that's how I picked my, my first scents. Uh, let's see. All right, so I'm, I don't know why I have contacts in, but I'm having a hard time seeing. I'm blind. All right, so that was fun, but let's see how long, oh, I've been on for like a while. This was fun. So, I don't know, let's see. Has anyone ever scammed you? Ooh, this is a good one because it brings up a memory. Has anyone scammed you? How did you handle it? Candles are too exp expensive. I have a great story that goes well with this comment. So when I was first starting my new candle line, um, it was probably about three or four months in, this lady contacted me on Etsy and she had a she had a brick and mortar shop and it was about an hour away from me. And so I called, like she called me, we contacted each other a few times, we talked on the phone, we talked about um, you know, putting stuff in her store and all of that. So I was like, okay, I'm going to make you a display. And she told me she had other Etsy makers that were going to come in there and sell stuff. And then she told me that she didn't have the money to pay for the stuff, but it would almost be like a co-signment thing. So I said, okay. Um, so we'll, we started with the Valentine's line and I bought a display. So I bought, um, a little cart which I know a lot of companies do have the option where they sell you displays but I don't know if like you just give someone you might have it may be a practice to give displays to loan and then they give them back but usually like you they can buy a display add-on or something like that but anyway I provided her with this nice little rustic looking cart and then I had all the candles on it and then I made um, chalkboard signs and all of that and then so the first few weeks went okay she would pay me we talked about how much she sold and then all of a sudden I stopped hearing from her <laughs> and then that was it I just never got the rest of the candles back I never got the display back and I kind of feel bad because she contacted people who were literally like hours away in Texas so they drove like three four hours to like get the opportunity to be in this shop that she kind of talked up it was a floral shop and it was funny because when I got to the shop, I noticed there was another floral shop in her same um, in her same downtown area across the street. So I was like, uh oh, I don't know, because they're, they're kind of two floral shops. And then hers wasn't really that put together. It didn't have any flowers in it when I went. And she just kind of seemed like she was all over the place and uh, like she just did it. Maybe it was her first brick and mortar shop. I don't know. But I ended up not hearing from her, not getting the candles back. Um, so if anyone ever contacts you for cosign, I don't do cosignment anymore. I just do wholesale. So I don't even do cosignment. I don't even do it. Um, let's see. I think YouTube really helped your business flourish. Yeah, I think YouTube did too. And I think, um, starting YouTube channel is probably one of the best things I've ever did. Cause not only it gives you like a be a bigger audience, um, it gives you new skills too so it gives you new skills like video editing and stuff and uh, I feel like when I won the Etsy Etsy competition thing last year it was mainly I put a lot of work into the video part and I had already experience with the video part so I think doing YouTube like really does help and it's just another form of marketing I mean it's it's it is marketing but I do it, it you can be creative with it you can connect better with it like with Instagram, it's pictures, but I feel like with YouTube, the videos and interacting, like how we're interacting now, um, it's a really good way to connect with the audience and stuff. And I don't know. Um, I think like uh, also like other people find me from YouTube. So other companies might be searching and they find you from YouTube. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> can you say my name? Okay. Hi, Kim. Kim Garcia. Nice to see you. Uh, so does wholesale pay you up front? Yeah, wholesale pays up front. So like when someone goes through my wholesale, like I don't, I don't do a third party wholesale at the moment. I just do wholesale through my website. So if someone fills out my wholesale form and um, you know, we send them the wholesale email, we tell them the price and 
you have order quantities that you need to abide by. So like the wholesale customer enable to like enable to even place an order, they have to order a minimum order minimum quantity. So let's say your minimum quantity is 12 and they have to order that before you even start the wholesale. So they pay up front and you can do like when the client becomes a little like uh, like a regular client, it is very uh, like what is the word? It's very common to do something called net 30 where they purchase and then they pay you 30 days later. So that's very common in the wholesale world. Um, but that's usually you'll do that with the customer you've already been acquainted with and stuff. So, um, do, do. yeah, so it is personable. And like, I do like just talking to you guys and stuff. Um, so I like connecting with you guys and like the example I gave earlier, connecting with people who are starting their businesses. And I know it's really fun to see how other people, um, how just something like one of your experiences can help other people. Like for instance, maybe someone contacts you about consignment and then you realize, you know, you remember my story of how I got scammed. So then you don't get scammed. <laughs> so it's a way we can kind of connect and stay, I don't know. And it just kind of helps other people. So it's cool. Uh, I can't believe you said my name. <laughs> can we watch? Oh yeah. So I'm excited. Um, I have, like things planned for next year hopefully it goes well because it'd be something really really big and different so we'll see how it goes um so this was fun <laughs> and i'm thinking uh i'll do a vlog about let's see what one more question wholesale is your brand that's wholesale or do they use their own label oh that's a good um that's a good thing so when I wholesale my candles, I don't let them private label my actual candles because they have a distinct look. So if we are all selling strawberry shortcake candles that look the same and they all have different labels on them, then that could be confusing because I'm sure like they're going to post on Instagram and um, it'd be confusing if we're all selling the same candle, but then there's different company names. And when you private label, they are able to set the price, whatever price they want. So uh, no one has ever done this. I'm not saying anyone has done this. It's just something I thought about before. Uh, so like if I were to sell, a, you know, company X, my candles, they put, you know, their own label on it and they could undercut me and say, okay, well, she's charging 23, I'm going to charge 22. And then it become this whole thing. So on my candles, uh, all of my wholesale customers at the moment, they use my labels. Um, and then, so that uh, a lot of them have like, you know, different kind of shops. So they're not just candle shops. Maybe they have gifts or whatever. Um, one person, I think she is a candle shop, but then she may, she might do other candles. I don't know, but I do want to come out with a private label line for them. So then they can put their own labels if they want, and then they can charge however much they want. So that's something I'm going to think about in the future. But at the moment, they use my labels. Uh, all right, thank you for coming, Scented Charisma. You may have covered this. I was told to only burn soy candles as other candles were dangerous. Ooh, I was waiting for this can question. Okay, so when I first started, I thought the same thing because I would see, um, I would see like little infographics on. Uh, Instagram about how paraffin candles are toxic and then they're going to like make you sick and all of that so I started using soy um, and then I switched when soy wasn't really working I switched to parasoy and then when I really wanted to do paraffin I thought okay let me do some research on what what people are talking about here and then if you go to national national candle no candles.org which is the National Candle Association they have um, scientific studies on there where you can read through and the National Candle Association determines that there's nothing like toxic about the paraffin candles um, and really like that's what they determined so that's why I use paraffin and I really couldn't find the study uh, correct me if I'm wrong but I couldn't find the study the scientific study saying that paraffin was toxic. I looked around and I couldn't find the study. 
so I'm not sure where that came from or but I burned the candles in my home and um, after reading those studies I'm fine with using paraffin so I mean like you know the paraffin and soy wax process they both go through the same kind of like approval process so I don't know I honestly I don't know where the original paraffin is toxic came from so if you know please let me know because I couldn't find it <laughs> uh, let's see do I have a website oh yes it's just windingwithcandles.com so it's always linked in, in all of my videos my website so I used both types and I had any problems yeah so and even a lot of seasoned candle makers like uh, when it comes to the paraffin thing if you like talk to candle makers from like 20 years for, who've been doing it for 20 years um, I'm not sure like how that because I always saw like these infographics of like their soy candle and then the paraffin candle would have all this soot and stuff on it and they would say it was toxic but I like had soot with a soy candle before too when I didn't know what I was doing I like over wicked the candle and there's a whole bunch of soot so you can do get soot from either candle um, so not sure uh, have you ever been recognized out in public no <laughs> I have not I am not that status where people are coming up to me and recognizing me so no that has not happened um, I don't know maybe if I ever did like a pop-up thing then I don't know but no one has ever recognized me in public Ooh, someone said I hate Halloween no <laughs> You know, I really, I'm, I'm not a Christmas person. Like I'll decorate and stuff and my son, like we celebrate Christmas, but I don't really get into it. But I, for some reason I really get into Halloween and I think mainly like the, um, the costumes and just, there's a lot of create creating involved, like makeup, costumes. That's probably what I like about it. I don't know. And I do like scary movies too. So. Oh, thank you, Kim. What is your top seller and what do you burn most at home? So my top seller is probably strawberry shortcake. Between stra strawberry shortcake and cinnamon bun, I personally always burn caramel popcorn or I've been burning pumpkin souffle, but I always burn caramel popcorn. It's my number one favorite. It's not really one of my top sellers, but it's my favorite, like my favorite. So I always burn the caramel popcorn. Uh, is there a wick or wick brand that you feel does better than others? So this is going to depend on a lot a lot of things So my wick drawer is huge. It has all the different wicks because it depends on the wax you're using It depends on the container. So if your container is big or small or tall um, It's always going to change so any element that changes is always you're going to use maybe a different wick I have been using CD wicks because I noticed that they do this thing where they curl like this and with my candle design like the top is kind of it has a little more air because there's it's whipped so I like that the the wicks do this because then it's like less soot um, like if I were to use an eco wicks eco wicks do not curl they don't do that so it would be a lot of soot coming from that but an eco wick might work in a soy candle so it, it's always going to change depending on whatever you're using Ooh, do you live in new york because i live in new york no i was in new york last year though but that it was my first time in new york last year and i really liked it um it was uh, where did i go i went to the the met museum and it was real. It was one of the coolest places I've ever seen. Like all of the artifacts and paintings and stuff in that museum was amazing. And New York has good food. But no, I live in Texas. I love Halloween. It's my favorite holiday. Giving candy to the kids, dress up. Yes, I love it. And I love like um, at my mom's old house. I would kind of decorate every year, and then uh, I would really go out on the. The front lawn decorations and then I remember I felt so flattered when this kid was like I remember you from last year like he remembered the house and stuff so I was like yes <laughs> that's what I want to do I want kids to like come to the same house you know when you're a kid and then you go trick-or-treating and you're like we gotta hit this house because last year they had the good candy and they had the good decorations oh I stay in your area 
Oh, I might see you. I don't go out a lot, to be honest. I don't like, <laughs> you might not see me actually. <laughs> like I, I do not like going to Walmart. So I, I will only go if I absolutely have to go. Like I order everything online. I order groceries online. I order everything online. So it's, I only really go out if it's like last minute, even before the pandemic. I was like, I do not like going out. <laughs> So if you see me, that'd be a very rare uh, occasion. Uh, oh, you live here too? Ooh. <laughs> Just starting your candle journey, having issues with smooth tops. A lot of candle makers will message me about smooth tops and wet spots. Like I'm gonna raise my desk, it raises up. See. <laughs> smooth tops and uh, honestly a lot of customers don't care too much they don't care a whole bunch about like the the look as much as we do but like soy candles once you burn them they're gonna always have that kind of the top to them where they're not totally smooth so there really isn't anything you can do about that uh, have you used wood wicks if you do uh, I've used wood wicks I don't really like them that much I don't know I don't like I mean it's not that I don't there's nothing that I don't know I just don't use them um, I notice like the flame gets kind of crazy maybe it's just me because I tested it like once um, I don't know I I don't like them in my style of candle I don't think they would work in my style of candle but maybe like I've always wanted to try those um, woodwick candles from I think they're from it's a Bath and Body Works where they have like this weird wave to them. It's like a big candle like this. And it's like wavy. Those are kind of cool. But for me, um, I haven't had any anything crazy like uh, testimonials about wood wicks. They're okay. Like I don't have anything against them. I just don't use them in my candle making. Um, let's see. How the heck do I get sponsored? The desk. Oh yes, the desk was, uh, this was free you guys. And then they just wanted me to make a video and I was looking for a desk. Like, I wasn't even lying in that video. <laughs> when they contacted me about the desk, I was like, yes, because I wanted a standing desk right here. And then when I went to Ikea, they did not have the standing desk legs. But like how you get sponsored in videos is so, Usually once you start gaining traction, people will contact you. And I don't take every sponsor because some of them are silly. Like sometimes people want me to sponsor toys or things that don't even make sense on my channel. So I only take the ones that are, that kind of make sense <laughs> and that I like. Um, and let's see, I think after a while they do just start contacting you uh, once you do start getting a little bit more subscribers maybe. Um, but yeah, and then now my brother does PR for me, so he kind of he he kind of contacts people and stuff. But the desk thing, they just contacted me. <laughs> um, heat guns fix the top. That's true. Are you still podcasting? I have a podcast, but it's very. I've been a little bit like I can only do like so many things. So now that I'm focusing on the course, then. It's always something that kind of falls behind and that's kind of one thing I'm trying to fix this coming year. So I'm trying to expand a little bit, expand the team. So now my brother does more of the PR stuff and I did talk to someone about doing copyright. So meaning emails because emails is another thing I'm, I fall behind on. I'm really bad at, I never send emails and um, I do want to send at least like one valuable email a month like to all the people who want to learn about candles, but I never am able to do it. So I talked to someone about um, potentially doing that for me, like helping with emails, blog posts, because man, it takes a lot. Like the videos take a lot of filming, like, and you don't really think about it when you're, when you're watching, like when I was watching videos, but when you start doing it, you realize that, okay, the shot of me getting something out of the microwave, let me reposition my camera. Okay, now I got to show them I'm coming to the desk with my food. Let me position my camera. So it's kind of silly, like all the little things you have to do and it takes a long time. So um, I'm trying to figure out better ways where I can get everything kind of like better flowing. So it's like professional and 
you have podcasts, you know, at a, at, at a certain date, and you have videos a certain date, and you have blog posts, newsletters, and hopefully I can expand that a little more in the coming year. Someone says they love the woodwicks. I do like the crackling noise of the woodwicks. Thank you for recommending Anchor. Yay, that's a really good idea, helping you with your speaking fears. That's really good. So yeah, I use Anchor, and it actually you can you can like broadcast your podcast to all of the podcasts using Anchor. So you don't have to like upload it to each different platform. Uh, is that a huge candy corn candle? Oh, this? Which one? This one? Oh, no, no, no. This was... Um, the wax is setting now. So this was the wax we used to pour, um, to dip our candles. So it's just setting now. But we were earlier, if you are just tuning in, we dipped these candles and um, we made little jack-o'-lanterns out of them. Uh, I really love your videos, especially your podcast. I know, and I really like the podcast too, because um, I feel like I can just talk like a little bit more real on there and it's just more casual and like with YouTube videos there's a certain thing people have a little bit more shorter attention span on the YouTube videos they don't want to just like you, they don't want you just talk they want to see you do stuff like that's why they're on YouTube <laughs> so I like the podcast too how is the virtual assistant working out so I talked about this in my last podcast but the virtual assistant didn't work out and it wasn't their fault I, I really think it's my fault and it's not like we were arguing or anything crazy, but it was, I think, one of the things I'm gonna work on for 2021, um, learning how to manage and keep people like engaged and keep them working. So it's one thing to hire someone um, and have them kind of, I even made like a whole training manual. So um, on my email platform, I have a, like they have this thing where you have like this company whole little company database you can have like a company Facebook thing almost like Facebook and you can do like a training manual and so I made a training manual he did it he was great and I think after a while he just kind of got bored and I think it, it was more so my fault for not having um, things in place for him to do like on a daily basis so I think people who are working for you they want to know what to do next so a lot of the time you know having structure and stuff like that so I found someone I want to work with on that. So hopefully I can go through that first before I start hiring people again. I want to make sure if I hire someone that it's going to be easy for them to kind of um, grow with the business and keep going along. So I'm finding that hiring people, especially virtually, I think when you're face to face, it's easier. But virtually, it's harder to um, keep the contact and keep it flowing. So that's what happened there so at the moment I don't have like an assistant right now but I've kind of figured out different systems um, like automation systems to kind of help with some things I was lacking so at the moment I don't really need the assistant anymore because I feel like I've kind of figured out a little bit of like how to automate stuff but eventually I probably will need somebody again so that's kind of where that's at uh, considered working with someone else for more ideas on how to expand your design mindset collaboration maybe in the future maybe if I ever needed to like do something crazy different and I needed someone else's expertise maybe um, I wouldn't be against that it's hard being a solopreneur you have to do everything yes you have to do everything so like editing the videos editing the podcast uploading making the products making new products fixing you know doing the website. So I'm starting to outsource things more like on Fiverr. So outsourcing, um, what is it? Uh, editing stuff like photo editing, um, just finding little ways to outsource really helps. And let's see, do you know if there is a difference between Cargill C6 and wooden wick? Uh, I've never tried the wooden wick coconut soy wax yet. So I'm not sure. Uh, I actually have it in my house, the wooden wick one, I just have never tried it yet. So I haven't used it yet. I can say the Cargill is good, but I can't um, say how that is versus the, the wooden wick one. Um, uh, da -da -da. Oh, you're new to the channel. Can't wait to see the vids. Oh, cool. Thank you. Do you have help or work alone? So right now, my mom does come help and she'll do stickers. So she'll sticker 
um, like labels on and stuff. My husband will help make the candles, so he's really good at making the candles, so he'll help when he can. Um, but that's pretty much all the help I have, really. <laughs> so it does help to have, you know, someone doing stickers and wicks, but I don't really have like a, a full-time person helping. And let's see, is it hard working alone and how do you do it? Uh, working alone is hard because sometimes it's like uh, trying to figure out how to do stuff and especially when it comes to like what to do next, sometimes that can be hard too because you're like, okay, what do I need to do next as far as like the project wise? Like what's the next project I need to work on? So for me, you know, do I need to work on the course or should I work on some YouTube video for the holidays or trying to figure out what's the next best move when you're the only person is kind of hard because there's nobody else to like tell you if that's good or not. Like, you know what I mean? So, you know, sometimes people will have like business partners where they can kind of bounce ideas. But when you're the only person, sometimes you're like, oh, I don't know if I should do that or not or if that's worth spending time on you know what I mean so I think that's kind of like the hard part of working alone um but yeah so I'm still trying to and I think also just like figuring out how to expand that's kind of a hard part too so figuring out okay so for my course business how do I expand that to make it even better or how do I expand my candle business or how do I do the YouTube channels because I think you know sometimes you might you always have to improve like you can't just keep doing YouTube you know how people always they have to improve a little bit so especially when you think of like how youtubers first started like their first video versus their newest video it's always like some improvement either it's the way they're speaking or the way they're filming or the or the equipment you have to kind of always think about what you're going to do next do you plan on expanding your brand? This is another idea I have for next year. So as I can't say a lot about it, but I have an idea for next year. Um, I have a, I have two big ideas for next year. I'm working on one of them now. So I do have plans. <laughs> All right, so that was really cool. That was fun. Do you make wax melts? uh i am working on that so i i put wax melts into the hollow's eve box but i don't have any i actually just unmolded some wax melts the other day for christmas so i do plan on coming out with um individual wax melts for christmas and they're going to be the same as the hollow's eve like the same packaging so they're going to be in the same macaron thing um the macaron packaging that were in the, that box but they're going to be Christmas scented not Christmas scented but scented for the holidays don't lose your authenticity no that's one thing that I will not do because um, I don't know I just feel like uh, I don't think that's something I could ever you know keep behind I'm, I'm not one to just do things for views or do things for how can I make you know myself even bigger I always want to be like myself so especially like I said with the Halloween video I knew that wasn't going to get views and I still did it anyway because that's just what I want to do and I've always kind of been that person even when I was younger I've always just done things how I wanted like if I want to dress a certain way or if I want to you know I, I've never had a problem with like just trying to be me so I would definitely want to keep that throughout this whole thing and I'm not gonna do things just for the views or I don't know it doesn't sound appealing <laughs> um, let's see it's the reason why I watch only you well um yeah I don't know I do like a lot of the other candle people on here too I think um, maybe it's just different personalities I think everyone has a different personality so uh, like sometimes maybe I might be a little quirkier than other people uh, <laughs> or I don't know so I just I just want to stay authentic because I think when you try to be someone else it's almost draining it's like you have to always put on for you know the camera 
and I'll, and I've always kind of struggled with sometimes I felt like I was a little too boring or monotone on camera but I'm just like that's just how I am I'm not gonna come out like you know screaming at the camera like some youtubers because maybe that's how they are but that's not how I am so I don't know like sometimes I'm editing I'm like oh my god I'm so boring I'm just like <laughs> the way I'm talking is just like feels boring but I'm like okay that's just how I am uh let's see so wax melts are in the works new things I'm very excited about you're quirky too yeah <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I, I almost uh, don't express it enough on YouTube how quirky I am because I'm like, I don't think people care too much about all my little things I like to do, but I don't know. Maybe eventually y'all will see it. Uh, loved your Halloween vid. Thought you did an amazing job. Very creative. Thank you. Thank you. It was, um, that take, that took two months to put together. It took two months because of course I have everything else going on. It took a long time. But it was fun. Great learning experience. It taught me like better editing and um, how to use a gimbal. <laughs> make the So now I'm really into using the gimbal to make the, the shots a little steadier. Because you know how sometimes when people are vlogging and the camera gets like crazy and it's hard to watch. So now like I'm like I'll just you know use a gimbal. It, it makes it a lot smoother when you are filming. Where do I order my embeds? So you, I make a lot of embeds. So a lot of the embeds, I have molds for them. You can order them on Amazon and you can, uh, earlier in the live, I said uh, you can use silicone to make your own. So if it's a special shape that no one has, you can make your own. There's a lot of people on Etsy that make embeds too. So if you don't wanna make them, you can buy them from all sorts of sellers on Etsy. Um, Amazon has molds and if you go to any cake section, cake section of the store, there's molds there too. So I buy a lot of the molds on Amazon though, because like I said, I don't go out that much. So <laughs> I'll just buy them on Amazon. Uh, I love the way you made the book. I wish I could see more of those type of vids. So I, I mentioned this before, how I would love to create a second channel where, cause I do a lot of stuff. So I play music I don't think I've ever done that on my channel because it's not a music channel but uh, <laughs> uh, I played music for a while I and I played um, I think I, I played clarinet I'm not very good at violin I started learning piano um, I'm very good at guitar hero <laughs> uh, I've tried learning guitar but I didn't get too far in that uh, so I would like to create like a second channel that would be just like creative stuff where I just like do crafty things like you know doing more book stuff like you know paper crafts or you know this Halloween I was looking at you know those animatronics they sell in Spirit or in Home Depot where it's like the animatronics and then they're like spooky and they're always like three hundred dollars but then I always get upset because they look so cheap. And I was like, what if one day I just made my own animatronic? Like, that'd be cool to put on a second channel. So I think if I ever do expand the team to where I'm not so busy, another thing that I have on my on my backlog of things to do would to create a second channel that would really just be doing whatever I want to do. So because um, I know people don't want to see that on my first channel and <laughs> it'd be confusing. So having a second channel where you can just literally do whatever, I'd probably do that. Um, what was the most difficult obstacle you had to overcome so far? <clears throat> I think um, burnout. Honestly, burnout is the most difficult thing. And um, in my podcast, I talked about how there was a couple months where I, I almost was like, I don't wanna do this anymore. I thought about just like quitting because it was so hard. It's so much work um, to continue trying to keep everything going. Like now, you know, having to talk to wholesale clients, having, you know, to do phone interview things and doing all the things that go along with having a business. I got really, really um, was it overwhelmed. And I think that's honestly the hardest thing, like the hardest thing is um, keep keep going, like keeping the momentum going when you don't want to anymore. So that was another um, 
thing I had to like get over the past couple months and again that doing that whole little video thing really helped me because I was actually watching this youtuber and she uh, her name is Evelyn from the internet and she just put a video I think like a couple days ago where she talked about this exact thing about when you are feeling like not creative or whatever and and when being creative is your job like putting a deadline on creativity is kind of hard so like um, you know you have this thing you need to make and you have a deadline it's actually kind of stressful and it almost sometimes sometimes it can take the fun out of being creative and she talked about like just doing something completely different which is what I ended up doing um, I ended up just doing that random video or I ended up randomly picking up painting because it almost is like a reset so I think that's the hardest thing is getting over burnout um, is the, like it's probably the hardest thing like that I've had to to um, deal with having a business uh, should the embeds be the same type of wax as a candle it can be um, but not it doesn't have to so if the embed like on my previous designs the candles the embeds would stick out of the um, of the candle so they the embeds had to actually be a little bit harder than my candle um, so I would use a harder wax so that they wouldn't get crushed in shipping so they don't necessarily have to be but it's easy when they are because you can kind of use leftover wax to make embeds like if you have leftover wax from pouring you can just make new embeds that's what I do with leftover um, but they don't have to be mm. paper crafts I have a lot of paper and want to make some origami and it didn't work um, yeah, so just trying something new and a lot of the times when you start something new, it's probably not going to be the best thing you've ever made. It's just a matter of sticking with it and then like keep trying because then sometimes you never know what you're good at until you try. I think that's why I like doing a lot of random things because you never know what you're good at until you try. So um, sometimes I'm kind of bad about doing random things because then I'll like buy all the materials just for this random project and I end up not liking it or so I used to do knitting a lot so before this whole business I had a little bit more time on my hand on my hands and I would knit and knitting takes a long time and I enjoyed it but I bought all this knitting this yarn and I don't use it anymore <laughs> and I probably never will because I actually don't like how long it takes so sometimes you know you have some wins and some losses I was experiencing experiencing burnout as a web designer so I started making candles yeah um, I never used to understand when people talk about like YouTube burnout but I totally understand because um, like sometimes you like especially on YouTube I think especially a lot of the big creators like not me but like the big um, YouTube creators that have like hundreds of thousands of subscribers um, if you think about it like YouTube people are used to your channel like there's very few youtubers that can just do random things like there are people out there um, Who do that but very few people can just come on and say, okay um, I'm gonna make candles one day and then the next day they're like, oh watch me walk my dog Like there's very few people that can make a living doing content like that So usually you have to do the same type of content over and over and sometimes it gets like a little like oh um, burnout like people sometimes people end up not liking the type of content so I don't know that's why I kind of like vlogs because it's always different I think so um, totally get that but this was fun so we have been on for almost two hours but I feel like we have just been chatting this has been fun like we were done making this candle like an hour ago but y'all are still on <laughs> we're still on chatting so I think this is cute I might actually give this I'm going to my best friend's house tonight and we're going to watch where I think we're gonna do pumpkin carving I might give her one of these but this was fun so I don't see any more questions so I might go ahead and hop off unless you have any more questions I'm gonna give you a few seconds because there is like a lag on in the time uh, of recording so what about make to order um make to order so I don't do custom candles but 
there are people who are searching for custom candles. I know custom candles are a very um, highly searched for thing on Etsy. So if you're looking to get some views, like if you're looking for search engine, I don't know, if you're doing the Etsy SEO thing and you're trying to figure out what you can sell to get, you know, get in the search, custom or yeah, custom candles are great, like birthday candles where you customize the label. Those are great. I'm not sure if you talk about this, but any new info on your courses? Um, so on the courses, um, I just got the sales page done. I talked about it in the very beginning. So if you if you came on after that, you didn't hear it. But the sales page is done, and then I'm filming um, just some little updates. So my camera was actually in the shop for a week, so I just got it back yesterday. So I'm filming some updates, and then like my whole recipe is changed so I have to film because in the course I showed how to make my candles but it's a totally different candle now so I have to refilm that and there's just some new things I would like to film for the candle making part and in this launch I am going to do a separate thing like that's just candles because a lot of people every time I launch they ask me if I have a course that's just candles and not business so in this launch there's going to be an option where you can just do the candles um, if you're not interested in the business because some people just want to learn to make candles and not make a business um, So that's going to be an option at a discounted price. I don't know the price of that yet. I haven't decided so but that is going to be an option Ooh, What's your favorite Harry Potter character? So favorite character Hmm. I don't know if I have a favorite character but I don't know Dobby <laughs> I'm definitely a Slytherin. I feel like I'm a Slytherin, um, how Slytherin, definitely. Like every time I take the um, the sorting, the, is it Pottermore? Pottermore quizzes, I always end up a Slytherin. So, but. <laughs> um, like the candle you make, is it bad to wait until you have an order to make it? Uh, will this, oh, okay. So I used to make candles like that. So I would make the candle you know as people order it in my current recipe like I can make the candles the same day and send them um, so I don't see anything bad with that especially if you aren't if the if you're just starting and you're not getting a ton of sales yet that'd probably be the better thing to do um, until you start seeing more consistent sales then you will know what to batch but now I batch things so I'll say I'll do like maybe two the plan is two candles a week to batch and I'll say okay this week I'm batch a whole bunch of strawberry shortcake and a whole bunch of caramel popcorn so that's how I do it now but in the beginning I would just wait till people order ordered it and then I would send it but if you are having to wait for it to cure um, you might have to think about that a little bit more because sometimes people's candles take like two weeks to cure so um, yeah uh, doo -doo. What scent do you hate but people love? Um, the scent that I hate, I do not like. Uh, when I used to make this, um, I would make that love spell scent from, it was like a dupe for that from, is it Bath and Body Works? I do not like that. And then um, baby powder. So I used to make a baby powder scent and people really liked it. And I was like, I do not know how you guys like this because it was, it would give me a headache. <laughs> It would give me a straight up headache, but some people liked it. Now so, it's like coffee. A lot of people love coffee scents, but when I make it, it gives me a headache. I don't ever burn the coffee one for fun. <laughs> I like coffee, but I don't like to just burn it. Um, lavender, I'm not, well I do have a lavender vanilla candle. I don't like just lavender though. Um, I'm with you on that lavender. And then someone said Dobby. <laughs> Dobby. Oh, poor Dobby. Uh, he was a real one. I hate Love Spell. I hate Love Spell too. I do not like that Love Spell. Ugh. And then when people spray it, you ever have like those coworkers and they just spray themselves in that bath and body like they douse and then you don't like the smell? Oh, and you can smell it all day. <laughs> I don't understand why people like fruit slices. Yeah. <laughs> Have you read all the Harry Potter books and seen all the movies? What type of tea and coffee do you like? So 
to be honest, I don't think I've read all the books. I think I've read the first few and then I just was watching the movies because I didn't really, back when I was younger, I didn't like read a lot, a lot. I didn't read until I was like a young adult, but now I don't have time to read. But um, I watched all the movies for sure and I watch them pretty much every year. So it's kind of like a Christmas holiday thing I like to do. Um, I like to watch Harry Potter and my son likes it too. So I don't know, maybe it's just nostalgic because that's what I grew up with. I know there's like a meme on TikTok where they talk about millennials, which I'm a millennial, I'm 30, so I'm a millennial. And they talk about how we love Harry Potter and avocado toast and I always feel so attacked because I like, <laughs> I like those two things. Apparently the younger kids don't care too much for Harry Potter and it's kind of weird because it's like you're 30 dressed up like a like a school school child <laughs> But it's fun um, What tea and coffee do you like so I'll drink I don't do too much tea, but I like Black tea. I do like black tea, um, but I do like coffee. So any kind of coffee really and I really like Vietnamese coffee if y'all have ever had Vietnamese coffee it's like it's like the best coffee it's it's just it's just the best coffee you can get what scent is your candle with the ducks that one is lavender and vanilla that's the lavender and vanilla one. Ooh, love spell reminds me of high school and that cherry blossom oh my god that cherry blossom <laughs> all the girls had that scent and it was just so annoying they had it in the lotion and the spray and I don't know. It does smell good though, but I think you just get tired of it. <laughs> yes. Oh, and the vanilla one too. The vanilla one from Bath and Body. <laughs> and my husband is here helping me with this live stream and you might hear him. He's snoring over there now. He's snoring in the in the office chair. But <laughs> This was fun. I know, right? This was fun. Yay. This was fun. So, I might hop off now because my husband is snoring and I am going to meet up with a friend and carve pumpkins. So, I really hope to you guys, if you didn't get to see the beginning of the live, you can always, I think this will be on YouTube, so you can just rewatch it. And you can see how we did this little carving thing. It was fun and yeah. So I hope you guys have a wonderful Halloween if you celebrate or like Halloween. I hope you have fun um, under these circumstances. And don't forget to tag me if you make anything or want to tag me at WWC Halloween if you made these little things here, these little pumpkins. So really enjoyed the live, you guys. And yeah, I think I'm going to actually do a Halloween party thing I mentioned this so I might vlog it um, we're gonna do I'm not gonna vlog like the party because it's like kids and I don't really like showing other people's kids but it's just my my son and my nephew so I might just vlog the the setting up and the decorations but I will end the live stream here and just I'll see you guys somewhere on the internet on Instagram or in the YouTube comments so I really had fun and thank you guys for tuning in for this long for two hours so this is a lot of fun um but yeah bye